So the tales are true. There is no toilet paper. How are we gonna wipe our asses? I guess we just can't anymore. Uh, what the hell is the world coming to? <sighs> yep, the world's in a dire situation right now. Toilet paper's gone, gyms are closed, you want some normality in life. And that's why we're gonna do the Buff Dudes at Home Bodyweight Workout. No equipment, full body, super intense. Let's do it. Are you excited for that? Let's do it. Hell yeah, that's the attitude I like. So I have my lovely girlfriend joining me today for this workout because we're basically both stuck in the house together and we need something to do. You know, there's no excuses to be lazy. You can still work out and that's what we're gonna do today. And we're gonna be stealing some of the exercises we're gonna be performing in this workout from our body weight program that we released a couple years ago. So it's definitely coming in handy today and probably for the next couple months maybe, we'll see. But we're starting this workout off with some squats because damn it, they're one of the best exercises you can do. And you're pretty familiar with squats, right? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. So Michaela's gonna be starting it off and we're gonna be doing four sets of 10 repetitions, but we're gonna be supersetting it with some single leg RDLs to make it that much more difficult. Now, to explain a little bit about these exercises, if you're not too familiar with the squats or the single leg RDLs, pretty much squats, um, what you wanna do is get your feet just about shoulder width or slightly wider Toes pointed out in a comfortable position. You'll be squatting down and kind of imagine your hips kind of going between your legs so that way it'll help you get your torso upright and you can counterbalance with bringing your arms up in front here and then you're going to be extending in your knees and hips to the top position and make sure your knees are following your toes at all times. So fairly simple movement and with body weight, it's a little bit easier as well because there's no weight to make it difficult. So you're gonna have to make it difficult for yourself by either slowing the reps down, speeding them up a little bit, and really contracting the muscles to make sure they're activated throughout that full motion. Especially in the top position when you extend your hips and knees, you can really squeeze your glutes at the top and really get those glutes fired up. And, uh, and then supersetting right on with the RDLs. RDLs are a little bit more tricky. It might not be for everyone. Um, because it takes a lot of balance and stability. What you're gonna have to do is support yourself on one leg and you're gonna kick one out behind you and you're gonna kind of reach towards the floor and you really wanna keep a nice vertical torso and also the leg that's kicked back behind you there. A nice flat back, kind of try to touch your toes. A slight bend in the knee is okay, but you really wanna focus on the stretch in the hamstring. Once you get down to that stretch position, you're gonna be extending in the hip to bring yourself to the top position. So it's really hamstring and glute, pretty much that posterior chain, um, you know, it really hits it very good. So that's gonna be the first two exercises, back to back, keeps your heart rate up, use a lot of energy, and we're off to a good start. Okay, so single leg RDLs, aren't for everyone, they can be very difficult, so there is variations that you can do to help work the hamstring, as Michaela is going to be showing now. It's pretty much like a hamstring curl, but as you can see, you're just laying on the ground. Her feet is actually on a towel. Thankfully, we have a hardwood floor, so it can slide along the hardwood floor, and uh, there she goes. So she's slightly picking her hips up, and she's activating her hamstrings to pull her heels toward her glutes, and that's really gonna fire those hamstrings up. A little bit in the glutes, but you're really trying to isolate the hamstrings as much as you can in this. Kind of keep that tempo up, nice and slow and controlled, and really get that mind-muscle connection. How's it feel, baby? It's hard. Yeah. So with legs out of the way, it's time for some back, and we're gonna be doing a couple kind of unique exercises. One that might not be you know, too familiar with for a lot of people. Uh, one is gonna be wall slides and the other is gonna be the reverse snow angel. And that's what's so great about these exercises. You really don't need anything. I mean, a wall and a floor, that's basically it. So we're trying to keep it as simple as possible. Obviously no equipment necessary. And I think that can be very important because not everyone has a pull-up bar or bars or dumbbells or anything like that in their house. 
And so this really simplifies it and makes it a lot easier for you still to get a damn good workout. Um, so we're gonna be doing four sets of 10 repetitions on both of these exercises. And again, it's gonna be a super set. As you can tell, Michaela is doing the wall slides now and she has her torso firmly planted against the wall as well as her arms. She's starting with a V shape, the top position, and then she's driving her elbows down into her back pocket area. And that's really gonna help activate the lats. But it also is an amazing mobility drill for your rotator cuffs as well. So it's really kind of a two for one deal which is pretty great and as simple as it looks it is actually very difficult and what you really want to do is try to have a nice smooth tempo take your time and really try to contract and engage those muscles it's really like that mind muscle connection and uh, then you'll be good to go all right we are on to the snow angels and as you can tell she is <laughs> she is face down on the floor a huge <laughs> yeah and she has a huge wedgie she fixed that though I don't think I got that on camera but maybe I did I don't know so, so as you can see in the prone position um, and it is is, as the name explains, like a reverse snow angel. You're making the snow angel kind of figure with your arms there. The key is to really try to place and plant your sternum against the floor. And so your lower back is slightly arched and you're keeping your arms uh, just about an inch or two off the floor and you're gliding them in a semi-circle around to the sides of your body there. And you're gonna again, keep that nice time under tension, contract that kind of muscles that you're trying to hit, the lats, a little bit in the rear delts, and I think it's working pretty good. <sighs> so we have push-ups superseted with the windshield wipers, and of course we are trying to engage the chest as much as possible. Now with the push-ups, uh, form on those, you really want your hands placed just about shoulder width with your feet together and in a plank position so your lower and upper body are in line with each other. Try not to pick your hips up too much or sag them down to the floor. Really help engage the core and you want to pull your scapula back together if you kind of protract your shoulders forward. Really it's going to be a lot of front delts and triceps. Pull your shoulders back, all of a sudden the chest is doing all the work, or at least most of the work. You know, the front delt and triceps are a secondary muscle group, but you really wanna primarily try to focus on the chest as much as you can in that pushing motion. And with the windshield wipers, similar position, but you're gonna bring your hands out really wide, wider than shoulder. The wider you go, a little bit easier it is to uh, kind of get that motion down and kind of rotate your hands slightly outwards and you're gonna be bringing yourself down to the floor just about an inch or two above the floor and you're gonna be gliding yourself from one side to the next. So it's kind of like an alternating motion and it really helps engage that chest. You're gonna feel it burn pretty quickly, but it's a bit of an advanced movement. Not everyone can do it. So as you can see, Michaela is doing the forearm plank um, push-ups and those can really help engage the chest, the shoulders, the core, the triceps, and help build up strength so that way you can start to introduce a little bit more advanced movements later on. Okay, so we just got done with chest and now it's time for some shoulders and we're gonna be doing two exercises. We're gonna do some pike push-ups and one of my favorites. And then I'm going to be performing some rotating planks and then Michaela's gonna be actually doing something different because the rotating planks are a little bit too difficult for her. So she's gonna be doing some handstand holds, which on their own right are very difficult as well. So it is four sets of 10 on both of these exercises. Michaela for her handstand holds is going to be holding them for? Four sets of 20 seconds. 20 seconds, sounds good to me. First exercise is going to be the pike push-ups, and you can see Michaela's doing the assisted version. She's doing it on her knees rather than on her feet. So it makes it a little bit easier, a little less body weight, so that way she can perform them. Um, to the best of her capabilities, but you can see that it's pretty much like a shoulder press and you're extending your elbows and the shoulders are doing a lot of the work along with the triceps as well and really trying to aim the head down towards the floor. You just don't want to hit your head on the floor, so you want to have that nice slow and controlled movement and that's pretty much it, the pike push-up. So a quick explanation of the rotating planks. It's going to be working in internal and external rotation for the shoulder joint, but you also have to utilize your core to stabilize your spine in that plank position. As you internally rotate, you're gonna be bringing your chest to the floor, and then as you externally rotate your shoulder, you're gonna be bringing your body away from the floor. So it's an excellent way to strengthen the shoulder joint as well as your core. Now, although I'm not doing the handstand holds, I'm a pretty big fan of this exercise because um, it really helps with shoulder stabilization as well as strength and there's also a variation in this exercise that you can implement into it to make it a little bit more difficult so if the handstand holds 
aren't quite difficult enough. If you wanna add a little extra movement in there, you can, which is essentially utilizing some scapula elevation and depression into the motion. So you pretty much can get into the handstand hold position and you're gonna be raising your scapula up and then depressing it down. So elevating it, then depressing it. So I'm just gonna show you real quick to get into position. You're gonna let your elevate, depress, elevate, depress. Up, up, up. So it's really gonna be working on the trapezius muscles to help move the scapula up and down. And it's kind of the, pretty much the opposite movement or function of, let's say, when you're hanging from a bar and you're depressing and then elevating your scapula that way. It's taking more effort to depress the scapula in a hanging position, but in this position, in a handstand hold, it's taking more effort to elevate it. So of course now you're working more on the elevation, but you're still utilizing a little bit of the depression and an eccentric contraction there. So it is still very beneficial. Next exercise on the list is going to be rollouts. And it is the last exercise of this workout. Rollouts is one of our favorite ab exercises. We don't have a little roller wheel in our house, so we're gonna have to kind of utilize something that we can find in our closet or kitchen or whatever else. So let's hunt something down. Now with the rollouts, you can tell there's a lot going on. You know, there's flexion and extension in the hip joint. There is flexion and extension in the shoulder joint as well. So when you bring yourself out into that plank position, your abs are really gonna have to contract to hold that position, as well as your lower back as well to help stabilize the spine. Um, but since you're flexing and extending in the shoulder joint during this exercise, be working the lats, the shoulders, the chest, a little bit in the triceps. So it's a very good exercise altogether, not just for your core, but a little bit for your upper body too. Now this can be a pretty difficult exercise for some people. So. Um, Michaela's going to be doing a variation of this and it's just gonna be the simple plank, which is also an excellent way to work your core as well. And it's a little bit more simple, but just because it's more simple doesn't mean it's less effective. So there we go. We just finished the Buff Dudes body weight at home workout and it felt pretty damn good. I wanna say thank you to Michaela for joining us for this workout. Um, although she really didn't have a choice. She's yeah. kind of stuck here with me. So, but what'd you think of this workout? I liked it. I look forward to learning more new good body weight exercises and yeah, getting a nice, good, quick workout in. Hell yeah, exactly. So this workout would be implemented in three days a week and that's what we're going to be doing. And we'll probably switch it up probably in the next couple weeks, two or three weeks, just to keep it a little bit interesting and exciting. And of course, as you gain a little bit of strength and familiarity with these exercises, it's good to make them a little bit more difficult and uh, just keep it nice and fresh and make sure you're always pushing it. You're always trying to get buff, baby. And that's what it's all about. So. Thank you so much for joining us for this video today. And uh, if you wanna see more in the future, let us know in the comments below. And we just wanna say, stay safe. And as always, stay buff. Oh, the eclipse. She did an awesome job, she kicked ass. And I really appreciate her putting up with me because she is stuck in this apartment with me all day, every day, for hours on end. And I'm actually naked right now. This is the great <laughs> thing about working out at home. You can just, you can do whatever the fuck you want because no one's around.